Now, uh, Joseph, at the turn of every election, uh, at least for this nation, we've been promised to achieve middle income status. Mm. Is this a pipe dream? <laughs> we were promised middle income by 2020. Now we are in 2020. We are as far away from middle income as is humanly possible. <laughs> so um, uh, as long as you have this administration and this government and the way they do things, we are not going to have a middle income. We are not even going to have any sort of decent income economy, if there is any such word. But here is the thing. With good leadership, middle income status is achievable. Because I'll tell you, there are certain countries which are very, would be wealthy, at least definitely much wealthier than us, that have a lot less than the resources that we have in this country. Some countries like Switzerland only survive on integrity and honesty. They have nothing. So Switzerland, integrity, honesty, banking, what? Yeah, a lot of the offshore, you know, um, uh, island, they have nothing, okay? Um, uh, you go to Mauritius, they have a bit of tourism, of course, because of the lakes, and then sugarcane plantation, and then all this offshore banking. And look at them, they are an African country like we are. <laughs> Their standard of living is far higher than we are, than ours is. Then um, other countries like Israel only survive on innovation. They have absolutely very little else. Innovation and um, uh, tourism from, you know, Christians going there to see, you know, those places where Jesus was, and that's it nothing else but a lot of innovation and yet actually it was ranked as the eighth most powerful country in the world when you combine so many other things israel a country whose land mass is about the size of buganda the buganda what we call buganda kingdom and with a population of about um, um you know 15 or 16 million that is about less than half of the population of uganda about a third of uganda's population with a third of Uganda's land mass, but very powerful through the power of innovation. And they have very little else. So, being that as it is, what is it that stops us from getting there? Apart from number one mindset, okay, number one, sorry, bad leadership and mindset. And of course, all those are tied. I'll give you an example. If a country with uh, proper leadership and proper you know, way of thinking, had the sort of tourism potential that we had, they could survive on that. Because many countries survive on, you know, ex extractives like minerals or oil, um, on tourism, on agriculture. So those are four things. Uh, minerals, oil, tourism, agriculture. Do you know how many of those Uganda has? All of them. And in very good measure. Very, very, very rich in minerals. And we have, they have only just started prospecting them. I was seeing, you know, a Spanish company which was, you know, given somewhere at Karamoja and what. They are only just beginning to discover minerals that we have here. Plenty of them. Enough to give us something decent. Our 40 million people. That's just minerals. That's before even we go to the oil and the thousands of barrels that we can produce every day coming out of those oil wells. And that, those are those which have already been dug, you know, in, um, in, in Chibari, in Hoima and in Pakwach. But then there is possibility of a lot more oil in Amuru and so many other places. Then Uganda has 49.6 of East Africa's arable land. The other countries share the other half. Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi share the other half. For us, we have 49.6. So is there any country that can do agriculture like we do, two seasons? Very few. I actually, I would be hard-pressed to mention any where you can have two abundant crops in one year. Two abundant crops. And that's even before you go into the depth of irrigation and all that, even at a very, you know, subsistence level. So, being that as it is, with our agriculture potential, with our tourism potential, a World Bank report said that with just a little bit of investment in tourism, we can make as much as $10 billion dollars in tourism a year, $10 billion. Considering that our budget this year is $45.4 trillion, which is about $13 billion, imagine you can get $10 billion from tourism alone. Okay? Yet your whole budget is about $13 billion. And then that's before you go into the oil, which we are failing to get out of the ground because of all sorts of reasons. Okay? 
Um, uh, the, the, we have lost a lot of money through sale of contracts from the first people who came here, heritage and so on. A lot of money has been lost in there. And people are selling the shares of Ugandan oil, getting money when Uganda has not at least officially gotten any money whatsoever. And that's even then the minerals. So with our agricultural potential, with the, uh, the oil, with the minerals, and with the tourism, what stops us from being a middle-income status country? Bad leadership. That's it. Now, now you've painted a very colorful picture mm. about the resources this country has. Mm. Uh, but uh, one wonders mm. what happened along the way. Uh, because we saw the government uh, institute operation, wealth creation, NADS, uh, ICT. Is it only bad leadership that is really to blame uh, for, this, for the failure of achieving the Ugandan dream? Bad leadership. If, if the previous bad leadership was, you know, in a lower case, now I put it in upper case, bad leadership. That's it. Because leaders determine how the people respond to the resources that they have. Okay, even if, of course, there is a corruption, there is a taking resources to the indomitables and all that. But if, if, if you reduce that and the resources are equitably distributed among the people of the nation, then we would have a lot more money among the citizens of, citizenry of the nation. But even aside from that, if we invested in the right things, for instance, tourism, because tourism gives money to the ordinary people. It is not money that, you know, can easily be taken by the nominable. So it goes straight to the people who provide services of whatever nature. You know, the hoteliers, the transport industry, the, you know, tour, you know, uh, tour guides and all that. Um, uh, so it's all bad leadership. Even the agriculture, there are people who, you know, um, uh, when our co quota for coffee, seem to go down and we could no longer do what you know the people were discouraged from planting coffee because they could not sell it anywhere so so many people cut their coffee trees nobody tells them what to plant they can there are things which are needed which uganda can provide it as far as a, you know being a food basket is concerned we only need a leadership to go and say now we have a deal with this country it happens even in developed countries for instance um uh, uh, america was saying they have a deal to sell how many you know, billion dollars worth of soya bean to China. And that took two presidents to sit and they hammer a deal in which we are, uh, China is going to buy America's soya bean for this amount and these products for this amount and these products for this amount. And what does America give in return? And then is the president of America involved in soya bean plantation? No. Planting? No, he's not. He's actually doing that for his farmers because those are the people who give taxes that sustain, you know. The leadership so it is just bad leadership pure bad leadership with just a little bit of you know the right um, education of what people should plant how they should plant it how they should access markets and things like that it is so easy to first of all change the lives of these people individually before even we start talking about the nation and, and when the lives of people change then the nation becomes rich what it is right now is we are trying to milk a stone. We are trying to get 45.4 billion from very poor people and who are becoming poorer and poorer with every passing year. So how are you going to get that money from people who have nothing to give? Of course, the usual thing. Um, I had the, uh, increased taxes on fuel, increased taxes on airtime, increased taxes on cars. The usual thing, but still, you're taxing just a few people. A few people. There are so many people who do not need fuel. Maybe apart from kerosene for the alarms, there are so many people who, you know, uh, are not going to be spending a lot of money on phones and so on, uh, airtime and data and so on. And that's the majority of Ugandans. So we really can use our first of all starting our agricultural potential to build and our tourism potential. Those are natural things which God gave us specifically as a country. No other country can have it. God gave it to us. And I'm a strong believer that God gives each country enough resources within it to make sure that the people in that country can thrive up to a certain level. Okay? Some countries don't have any agricultural potential, but they have oil and they are rich. Okay? Others... Um, have great tourism potential and they have nothing else, but they survive on that. Others just have minerals. Others, like Switzerland, have told you, just have honesty and integrity and they survive on that. Now, Uganda has all of the above except honesty. That one we really are in short supply. But we have all of the above and we still 
have a, somehow find a way to be poor. So middle income status is not a pipe dream. It is only a pipe dream with the current leadership. With good leadership, middle income status is very achievable. Thank you.